Hi, it's uh, Jason here from uh, Pure Energy. Um, we are a company that supplies um, retro technology to the TV and film industry. Um, and um, yeah, we've got here a video wall that we've uh, that we've set up. Um, this is using uh, twenty um, Hantrex. Um, well, actually, a range of different brands: Hantrex, Celico, uh, Barco. Um, and possibly others. Um, these are 28 inch uh, CRT screens, which is cathode ray tube screens. Uh, basically the old tech that we used to use uh, back in the, the 90s and, and before. Um, and uh, yeah, so these are 28 inch, inch screens. These are specifically designed for creating video walls from, um, although we're now doing it uh, 20 years after all the rest of the professionals um, stopped using them. Um, so yeah, we have uh, 20 screens, um, 28 inch uh, 28 inch each uh, in size that's a diagonal dimension so this wall is about three meters by two meters uh, in size as you can see there um, and I just thought I'd talk through some of the intricacies of doing this sort of thing now um, in 2023 um, as opposed to um, as it was then so you can see here actually this is a perfect time to mention it um, the first um, screen on the second row um, and the fourth screen on the first row, they're a little bit of a different picture on those than the others. Um, one's too bright, one's too dark or too contrasty. Um, so when you're setting these things up, um, you need to adjust the brightness and contrast and uh, other settings on them to try and get them all to be uniform across the whole wall. Um, that was easier back in the day because one, you're probably using all the same brand of uh, video wall screen, um, and two, they were newer and had the same amount of life um, uh, sort of used on them. Uh, now today we're using screens from different manufacturers um, and they've all had different amounts of working lives so some of them had harder lives than others um, so we have to sort of try and get the best out of these things um, you know even though that they're all kind of different. Um, it's also worth saying they're all different kinds of inputs as well so some of them are RGB um, and some of them are composite videos, some of them have SCART connections, some of them are BNC and, and so we have to account for that uh, to make these things uh, work. Um, also, I mean, there are um, sort of very, very slight, you can see the second and third columns are very slightly shorter than the rest of those columns um, because those uh, are a different brand. I think they're a Celti brand um, and they were just very, very slightly shorter than other uh, manufacturers out there. That's slightly annoying. So we have to build these things in a way that sort of compensates for that. Um, yeah, and there's the other thing for setting up. So, you know, I can see th those two screens in particular um, are really sort of uh, um, standing out to me, which is slightly annoying, but there you go. Um, we set this up just to test the, the screens were okay before they went out on a job. Um, we didn't do any setup on them. Um, but uh, you can see that uh, the, the screens are um, slightly different colours. Uh, here we've gone right close in onto one of those screens. Um, it's worth noting that back in the day you would have taken a, a standard definition video signal um, and divided that across the, the five by four screens. So each screen was doing very, very low resolution. Um, actually what I'm doing here is taking a 4K video um, and splitting it up uh, across those screens. So each screen is actually still running in its full capability of, of 720 by 576 uh, in terms of the pixels uh, that would be sent to them. So um, you're kind of watching, give or take, nearly a 4K video um, on those screens, even though they're old analog SD standard definition screens, um, which is something you can do now, you couldn't do back in the day. Um, and it just looks so much better. Being screens as well, like this, there's a lot of video, uh, sorry, a lot of light coming out of these things. Um, and uh, it's sort of a, a nice, vibrant, crisp picture to look at um, in real life. Um, the other thing is, is uh, overscan. That's an issue on some of these things. So you have to make sure that the pictures kind of line up from screen to screen. And you can see on these, they don't, you know, it's pretty good, um, but it's not 100% right. Um, and at the credits at the end of this, you'll see um, how not right it is. I probably shouldn't show you because I'm not doing ourselves a, a good service, but it's interesting to see the uh, tech side of these things. Um, we supply these for sort of uh, all sorts of different things from uh, film and TV or pop videos uh, use them. Uh, if you search KTB Paradise, uh, on YouTube, you'll find uh, these screens in use there. And we surrounded them with uh, other 17 inch screens as well to make something a little bit different. Here you can see that uh, the camera angle from the side there, so you can see these are deep um, screens. They're not LCD. Uh, these are, um, you know, there's about uh, just over a foot depth to them as well um, because CRT tubes are, you know, are deeper than a modern screen would be. Um, 
and again, you can see some of the differences. You can notice it more on some of these other screens, um, more than uh, scenes, more than others. Um, the, the the brightness and the contrast differences, and you can just about see to the right there the the playback units. So we've got twenty processors um, running, feeding video to each of these screens, because obviously um, each screen has to take its own video feed. Um, so the rack to the right hand side you can just about see the laptop on top um is processing all that and there's 20 video feeds going out um through those wires at the bottom there that you can see um so each screen is being fed its own video signal um a lot of people would just assume you can just feed it with one signal um and it goes and daisy chains across to all the screens as you would do on modern day screens uh, but that is not the case um when you're talking about old crt screens um, overscan is another issue, um, so making sure that the overscan is set right uh, for each of these so that the picture does you know, show properly uh, and all the images join up properly, that is a, a thing that we have to make sure um, that is set. Um, once that's set, it's, you, know, you can usually go from place to place and it's, it is fine, but the, um, the brightness and contrast does change, it, it changes with temperature a little bit and, and that sort of thing. Remember, these are old analogue screens um there is nothing digital about these things um but i think as you can see it looks it looks pretty good uh, and actually because it's the the retro feel you know we are doing this as i say about 20 years beyond anybody else doing it um people actually like to see those differences between the screens um it's part of that aesthetic um so yeah it, it, people don't mind that now it's it's all part of the look um back in the day we you would try and even those out a lot more than maybe we would today um, it's interesting actually because a couple of times we have used these things, the video we've been supplied with, they've all they've put um, effects in um, into the video that makes it look old and, and like an old VHS tape and stuff like that. So they make it look um, even worse or, or better, whichever way you look at it, um, than, uh, than the screens can actually show um, with some of those sort of VHS effects. Um, oh, that's quite a nice angle from, from down uh, the bottom there. Uh, it is quite big, it's like I say, three meters by two meters, so it's quite an imposing screen. And we have about um, 40 of these screens that we can use, um, but obviously every screen needs its own video processor. So if you're having a setup with 40 screens, it means you need 40 video processors and it starts to get complicated and expensive. Um, but yeah, so that's it. And then we have lots of other screens as well. We've got about, a I think, getting on for a thousand screens in the collection. Um, not all this size. We have old TVs, proper old school, um, you know, home t televisions. And we have sort of 17 inch versions, nine inch versions. Um, and we can do similar tricks and things with those. Um, but to do a video wall like this, we try, you know, ideally it needs to be uh, all the same size screens so that the, the maths of dividing the picture down is quite straightforward. You could do it with different size screens, um, perfectly feasible. Uh, but uh, yeah, it takes a little bit more head scratching to work out the positioning of the uh, different parts of the original picture on each of the screens. So there you go, that's the end of the uh, the Big Buck Bunny film. Uh, this is where you start to see the, the uh, differences between the screens. Um, I'm having second thoughts about showing you this part. Um, but there you go, so you can see, and it changes from screen to screen, so uh, as it scrolls up the screen, you can see that the positioning uh, is right at one point and then goes out. Um, and you can also see the, the uh, curvatures of these screens as well. Um, these do have a, 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 a glass front to them and, and it is curved. Um, that's just part of the aesthetic again, so it, it just looks nice um, and different from what we've seen today in our normal run-of-the-mill uh, LCD screens. Um, actually, because the background here is all one colour, uh, vaguely kind of similar colour, uh, yeah, you really do see the differences between those different screens. But we can adjust that out to a certain extent, um, not completely because of the age of the screens. Um, but, uh, you know, again, it's all part of that aesthetic. Um, and showing this text going up the screen now is uh, a little bit jumpy, but, you know, that's the way it is. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, and uh, sort of a bit of the insights behind running these CRT screens today in 2023, uh, as opposed to sort of 20 odd years ago when they were first um, out there being used, or before even, I don't know. Uh, so there you go, hope you enjoyed it. If you uh, uh, have any questions or want to know more, visit our website, um, which is tvfilmprops.co.uk, uh, or look us up online or follow us on uh, social media, um, TV Film Props, you'll find us on social media. Uh, on most platforms and see the sort of stuff that we're doing at the moment. Okay, thanks very much. <laughs>